Hi, welcome to lesson 5. While working with Linux, it's important to know how to deal with text files. Luckily, in this lesson you'll learn all about it. We start by discussing editors, with a strong focus on VI, which is the editor you should know about to change the contents of files. Next, we'll discuss the most common tools for displaying file contents, including more and less, head and tail, and cat and tag. Another important tool that you learn about in this lesson is grab which is helpful if you're looking for files that contain specific contents. At the end of this lesson, we'll quickly go through all of the commands you've learned. And there is the end of lesson lab as well. In this video, we are going to talk about text editors. Uh, so working in Linux mostly uh, happens from the command line. And uh, that means that you also need a command line text editor. Of course, the graphical user interface has text editors, but they are, these are useless if you're not in a graphical interface. Nano is very easy to use, and it's available on many Linux installations by default. Uh, Vim is VI improved, and VI improved is a very powerful editor with advanced programming features. Now, the thing is that on some systems you will only find VI or Vim. And for that reason, uh, you should invest your time learning Vim if you want to go deeper with Linux. If you're not interested in going deep and knowing all about the Linux operating system, feel free to use the Nano Editor. But if you really want to master Linux and have access to a powerful text editor, VI uh, or Vim is unavoidable. Uh, the downside is that Vim is more difficult to use, but uh, as I told you, you should learn how to use it anyway. For the simple reason that it is always available, even on very old uh, Unix systems. Uh, Vim is invented in 1984, so even if you get to a real old Unix system, you type uh, VI, uh, it will work. Uh, and in case you are confused, uh, what is it, Vim or VI? Well, on most Linux distributions, it's exactly the same. We don't care about the, the small differences between the two of them in this course. I just want you to learn how to work with them. Uh, because you will appreciate as it is a powerful and programmable editor that allows you to perform uh, text file operations in an easy way. Now you might notice that your distribution is not running the editor that you want to use. And if you want to change that, uh, you can use uh, this command export editor equals dollar which vim. I will show you that command uh, in just a little bit. Uh, but first, uh, I want to have a quick look at uh, nano. So here we go, I'm typing nano, uh, my file. And this is the nano interface. Now nano has been created uh, to be intuitive. So you can start typing. And you don't need to, uh, to do anything uh, complex. So no complex stuff. The only thing that is complex is what you do uh, when you are done with nano. Well, everything that can be done when you are done uh, is, uh, is in the lower part of the screen. Uh, you can see on the left there is uh, keystrokes that start with a caret. Uh, the caret is the, the control key. Uh, so if you use control X, for instance, then you will exit. Uh, and there are uh, more options that start with, uh, with a caret. The other uh, options are to the right on the bottom of your screen. Uh, they start with uh, M. Now, what is M? M is uh, what we call the meta key. And the meta key on most keyboards is uh, the alt key. So control and alt is what you need. Uh, so I'm going to use control X and control X is asking me save modified buffer. Yes, I want to save modified buffer. And file name to rate, to write. Oh, I noticed that I made an error when I created my file so I can still uh, change it here. Also nice is that it is asking me for the format. In, uh, am I writing in DOS format or in Mac format? Well, I don't care about the format. This is Linux, right? So we don't care about DOS and Mac. So I'm just going to uh, press enter and save file on a different name. Why is it asking that? Because I just changed the name. So yes, I want to save file under a different name. And oh no, error writing my file permission denied. Why am I getting permission denied? Well, there's only one way to figure out. I'm going to not save the modified buffer. And where am I? I am in TMP files. And apparently I don't have uh, permissions to write there. No permissions to write there? Well, that's, uh, that is something that we need to talk about later. 
I don't want to talk about permissions now, so let me go to my home directory and try again. Uh, nano new file. Hello, uh, hello world. Uh, Control X, same sequence again. Yes, I want to modify. I'm just pressing enter to write a new file. And here we go, new file has been created, as you can see. That is nano, and nano, as I said, is easy. The VI is not, but you should learn how to work with VI anyway. And that's in the next video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to work with Vim. Vim, VI improved. Almost everything that I'm showing you here works in VI as well. And on most distributions, there isn't even a difference. You type VI, you get Vim. So here we go. Uh, the first thing that you should know is that after starting Vim, it opens in command mode. Command mode is a mode in which you can use commands only. So if you start typing your text immediately, that's not going to work until you hit an I or an O. I is uh, getting you into insert mode, O is getting you uh, into insert mode as well, where I means insert and O means open a new line. Then you can start typing your text. And next you can type escape to get back to the command mode. Escape is the magical key. Uh, if you want to save your file or whatever else, uh, press escape. And after pressing escape, there are these magical commands. If you want to go for the minimal approach, there are four commands that really matter. Colon WQ exclamation mark will write, quit, and it doesn't complain about anything. It's an easy way to make sure that your uh, changes are saved. Uh, U is for undo, because sometimes you hit the wrong keys in, uh, in VI and you suddenly have copied the entire contents of your document 99 times. If you regret, just use U for undo. That will undo the last change. You can do uh, U for undo multiple times uh, to go uh, further back in changes that you have applied. And if you regret undoing uh, one change, you can use Ctrl R to redo. DD is convenient as well, deletes the current line. Uh, working with lines is very common on Linux, and most of the things that you will do in Linux are line-oriented, so it's good to know how you can delete a line. And then we have a somewhat more complex command, column percent %s slash old slash new slash g. That will replace all occurrence of old with new. Uh, that's command substitution, and that's actually very convenient. All right, these are the minimal commands to get you, uh, to get you started with VI. If you want to do more, uh, I can also recommend Vim Tutor. A Vim Tutor is a command that you can run, and it provides an easy uh, to use on-system tutor that will guide you through the essentials of using VI as well as Vim. It will take you about 20 minutes, but after 20 minutes you have really seen everything that is uh, essential. Now, before we continue, uh, let me visualize what you can do with the VI command and how it all relates together. All right, uh, well, what is the big thing about VI? Well, if you type VI or Vim, which you will probably mostly do, uh, you will uh, be opening what we call command mode. And command mode, well, uh, you may have got it, is the mode in which you can type command. Uh, in order to type text, you, ne you need to get back to input mode. Now, that already is giving you one problem. When you start VI, how do you get from command mode into input mode? Well, that is very simple. Uh, there are, in fact, multiple ways of doing that. Just to mention a few of them, you can use uh, I for insert, or O for open a new line, uh, or A for append. And let me just stop here because uh, I'm not even done listing the different ways. Uh, then you start typing your text and at one point you will be already typing your text and you want to get back to command mode. How do we do that? Well, you press the escape key. As you can imagine, there is no command to get back from command mode because if you would be typing a command in input mode, it's just interpreted as text. And once you are back in command mode, you can type all these awesome commands. Commands that really make sense once you are done, uh, W, Q, exclamation mark, with a colon. The command starts with a colon, so don't forget it. That's for write, quit, and don't ask questions. There is also U for undo, and there is colon Q exclamation mark, for instance. That is what you use if you want to make sure that your changes are not saved at all. 
There are many more commands available. We'll talk about these commands next. But this is what you need to know to get started with VI. Uh, so to summarize what you can do with VI, uh, I created a couple of slides uh, which are for reference only uh, with the most useful commands. So here are the slides. Uh, so here we have the, the commands uh, Q uh, for quit without saving, U for undo, Ctrl R for redo, V is entering visual mode, and you can use arrow keys to select a block, kind of useful, because on that block you can use D to delete, or Y to copy or yank uh, the current selection. Uh, you can also use commands like 3DD, which is deleting three lines starting from the current cursor position. Slash text will search for text, and GG will move the cursor uh, all the way to the top of the document. And the opposite is uh, uppercase G, which will move the cursor to the end of the document. Now, these are really essentials, uh, but there is more, uh, like W, which will bring you to the next word. Of course, you need to be in command mode to do so. Or B, which will bring you back uh, to the previous word. Uh, carrot, which will move to the start of the current line. And dollar, which will move to the end of the current line. Convenient if you want to put something in the beginning of a line. And then we have DW, which will delete the current word. So your cursor must be on the word, and DW will delete it. Uppercase O, which will open a line above the cursor position, and lowercase O, uh, which will do kind of the same, but uh, below the cursor position. And then, pretty convenient as well, is colon SE number. Colon SE number will show you line numbers. Uh, that makes it easy to talk about the line that you are working with. And finally, in this VI quick start, uh, there is R for replacing the current character. In the next video, I will demonstrate many of these commands. All right, for this VI demo, uh, we are going to have a look at the Ubuntu system. For the simple reason that on Ubuntu something very bad is going on. I'll show you. Uh, so when working with VI, uh, Use Vim, not VI. So Vim, my file. And what do we get? Oh no, command Vim not found. Yes, my friends, that is because Vim does not exist on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is uh, all about uh, being a user-friendly distribution, and the Ubuntu developers don't consider Vim, uh, Vim very user-friendly, so we need to install it. Uh, fortunately, it's telling us what to do, so I'm going to do that right now, sudo apt install vim. Later in this, uh, in this course, you will learn about the apt package manager and how it is used to install packages. But every now and then, uh, we can't avoid uh, using it already. Uh, so here we are, I just installed vim, so I can repeat vim my file. And now I can start typing. Well, uh, you think I'm typing hello world. And hey, suddenly I'm in insert mode. Why is that? Well, that's because I was uh, typing hello. H, E, and L are not a command. O is a command in VI. O will bring you to input mode. In the input mode, I can start typing hello world. How are you doing? Can you get me... Uh, uh, coffee. It is nice weather today. Ik kom uit Nederland. Whatever, we need some text, okay? Uh, once you are happy with your text, uh, then you can uh, type escape. Escape will bring you to the command mode again. Do remember, escape is what you always need before you are doing any commands. And if after that you regret, uh, you type O or I again uh, to get back to insert mode. In fact, there are many keys that will bring you to insert mode, like uh, A for append, and I for insert, and O for open a new line, and, and uppercase O for opening a new line above the current cursor position. You know what? It's up to you how many you want to remember. Personally, I'm always using O to open new line because most of the things that you want to do in VI are line oriented anyway. And you know what? I need some more text. So I'm going to use escape to get back to the command mode again. And I'm hitting V for visual. That allows me to, uh, to mark a block uh, using the arrow keys. 
Next, I'm using Y to copy, and then I need uh, P uh, for paste. And isn't that cool? That allows me to paste uh, all my text a couple of times. Uh, I want it to be in there a couple of times so that I can show you other things. Uh, like the word operators, W for word. Do you see my cursor? I'm hopping to the next word and B to hop back to uh, the previous word. And D, W to delete the current word. That might sound very uh, not very uh, useful, but in fact, uh, I like going there. Next, I want to do a manipulation to change uh, multiple occurrences uh, of whatever. Uh, so how do we do that? Look at the lower left corner where you can see me typing the command. I'm typing colon percent s. Uh, why is this command starting with a colon? People are sometimes asking me. Well, the best answer uh, that I can give you is because it does. There's no better explanation than that. Then the percent s is the substitute command. And if I'm going to substitute world uh, for moon, then it will replace all occurrences of the text world with the text moon. And I'm making that a global substitute. Without the slash g, it will only change the first occurrence on the line. I want all of them to be changed. So now we can see that all of them uh, are changed. Now what else is useful? dd for instance to delete a line and u to undo. And if I do u again, then I'm undoing the last ma manipulation. Now you can see that all these lines are reading hello world again. Uh, so what else uh, shall I show you? I think we have seen a lot already. Uh, so let's get back. Let me uh, use escape. Uh, and no, one more thing. Uh, and uh, I'm using i to open a new line. Do not forget to use Vim Tutor. Uh, I want you to use Vim Tutor. Why do I want you to use Vim Tutor? Because it's awesome. Let me use escape. And uh, this time, instead of colon WQ exclamation mark, I'm using shift ZZ, which is a shortcut that allows you to easily save this file. So here I'm back uh, on my prompt. And uh, last thing I want to show you is Vim Tutor. This is the Vim Tutor. How does it work? Start reading. Start reading and follow the instructions. Uh, and one of the first things that you will learn right here, this is kind of a funny one, and that's the only thing that I want to uh, to highlight. That's about cursor, ma uh, about cursor manipulation. You know, the thing is that nowadays all keyboards have arrow keys. In the old days, keyboards did not have an arrow key. So how did you get a line up, uh, etc.? Well, by using H. Uh, H, J, K, and L. Uh, so J is bringing the cursor down. L is bringing it to the right. Oops, it doesn't work on this line. There we go, L. Uh, H is bringing it to the, uh, to the left. Uh, and K is bringing it up again. Isn't that beautiful? Well, I would say go enjoy Vim Tutor. Uh, it's an awesome explanation of all the nice things that you can do with VI. In this video, I will tell you about more and less. Now, what is this about? It all started with more. Uh, more was the original file pager. A file pager allows you to, uh, to read a text file. Uh, and the essence of more is that it is doing that screen by screen. And uh, after showing the first, uh, the first uh, screen, it will print more on the bottom line, and you, you hit the space bar to see more. That is what more is doing. It's doing more. Uh, then there is less. What is less doing? Well, less is doing more than more. It was developed to offer some more advanced features. Uh, one of the most uh, important uh, features uh, that is added to less is uh, the option to go up. In more, if you press the space bar, you go to the next screen. And in more, there is no option to go to the previous screen. And that is one good thing about less. You can go to the previous screen uh, using arrow keys. As a reaction to that, the more guys have developed more a little bit more, uh, so that more, again, was doing more than less. Uh, but then the less guys uh, came in, and the result is that you can still do more with less. So you want to do more? Use less. Let me demonstrate. So I'm demonstrating uh, sudo more on var log messages. I want to take the opportunity to talk about var log messages. Varlog messages uh, on Red Hat, 
uh, has been the, the default log file where you can find system information for ages. I'll tell you later that nowadays there's this thing called the systemd journal uh, as well, but here we can see good old var, var log messages. And I'm using the spacebar to move forward in the output. And next, can I go up? Uh, and guess what? We can go up. Do you see that on the lower part? The more guys have woken up again, and uh, apparently they decided that they want to do more than less. I can tell you this is not working in all Linux distributions. Uh, this is a recent development uh, that is working here on, uh, on CentOS Stream 9. Uh, now, if I use less, I can do the same. Less on var log messages uh, is giving me, oops, permission denied. Of course it does, because we need sudo privileges. So there we go, and you can see it's looking kind of the same, and I'm using the spacebar again uh, to manipulate down. I can use arrow keys to go down and uh, up as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is how you work with, uh, with less. Now, is that all there is to say? Well, there is one more thing that is uh, kind of useful, and that is less minus F. The minus F is for follow. Uh, it will show you the last part of your configuration file. And the minus F makes that if anything is being logged to the configuration file, you will see that in real time. So less minus F, do remember it. And this was all that I have to say uh, about uh, less and more. Do remember, if you want to do more, use less. This video is about till and head, easy utilities to show the beginning and end of text files. Uh, so let me start by till etc pass wd. Uh, what is that doing? By default it prints the last 10 lines of etc pass wd. And can you guess what head on etc pass wd is doing? It's showing the first couple of lines in etc pass wd. Uh, now you can easily modify that if you use head uh, minus three on etc pass wd, you get the first three lines. Uh, and it's becoming funny if you uh, combine it. Head minus three etc pass w till minus one. What is that doing? Well, head minus three is producing the three lines, sends that into the pipe, and uh, after the pipe till is filtering out uh, the last one. So if you want to print the third line from any text file, uh, this is one way of doing it. Another thing that's quite common is uh, sudo till minus f uh, on var log messages. So what is that doing? Uh, that is opening uh, the var log messages file in real time uh, to make sure that if anything is logged and we can uh, we can see it already happening. Do you see that? Started VTE shell process, whatever. If anything is logged, you can see it in real time. Let me use SU and password. I don't know anything about password, so I'm pressing enter here. And oh no, we get filled to, uh, to root student on, P uh, on PTS1. Uh, that is uh, log messages in real time. And if you want to get out of there, you remember the generic way to get out of things in Linux? Control C. Control C is getting you out of there. Uh, and that's all I've got to say about tail and head. In this video, we'll talk about cat and tag. We've already seen cat. Cat is a command that you can use to print the contents of a text file. Uh, not page by page. It's just giving it all. Uh, what not so many people know is that cat has some useful options, like minus A, which will show all non-printable characters, or minus B, which will number lines, or minus N, which will number lines, but not the empty lines. And there is minus S, which will suppress repeated empty lines. And then there is tech. Tech uh, is uh, definitely the most useless command that you will ever find. Uh, it will do the same as cat, but in reversed order. Maybe that's useful to you, but many people don't use tech a lot. I just want to mention it anyway, for the simple reason uh, that Linux is created by developers, and sometimes these developers figure out something, and that finds its way to the Linux operating system as well, like the tech utility. Let me demonstrate these cat options. So let me start uh, with uh, tech on etc hosts which is showing etc host in reversed order. Cat on etc hosts, 
is showing it the right order. Uh, now let's talk about some options like cat uh, minus a uh, etc host, uh, which is showing non-printable characters. Do you see them? The only thing that you can see right here is the dollar sign to uh, to the end. Uh, now I am just wondering if we are going to create a file uh, vim on my file. Hello uh, world. I'm using a couple of tab keys here. Uh, can cat minus a uh, find these tab keys? Uh, oops. There we go. And as you can see, yeah, it's printing the tab keys uh, using uh, caret uppercase I. And that is uh, particularly useful. Sometimes you will create a configuration and your configuration doesn't work. If that is going to happen, in many cases, that is because of these non-printable characters. You need a way to figure out which non-printable characters are. Cat minus A is an awesome way uh, to figure it out. Uh, then uh, what else do we have? Uh, cat minus a uh, b. Well, let's not do that on uh, on this my file. Uh, let's do that on etc host for line numbers. Uh, so the b is for line numbers. Uh, the minus n and minus s. These are a little bit hard uh, to show you because they are about empty lines. Uh, so do remember them. And that's all that I've got to say about cat and tag. Uh, recommended to really remember minus uppercase A for the non-printable characters. That is very useful uh, while troubleshooting on some occasions. In this video you are going to meet your new best friend, the grab utility. I'm not kidding, grab is one of the most useful utilities uh, in Linux. But why? Well, that is because grep is what you use to find uh, text. You can use find text using strings uh, or regular expressions, which are special patterns that we will discuss in the next lesson. Uh, and you can find text in files as well as uh, using a pipe in command output. And grep seriously is one of the most important tools uh, on Linux. You will be using it so often. Uh, let's have a look at two examples. If you would do grep linda star, uh, that's a basic use where you will uh, search the text Linda in all files in the current directory. Uh, and you can use it in a pipe, as in PSAUX pipe grab HTTP, uh, which uses a pipe to show all lines that contain the text HTTP in the output of PS. For advanced grab use, regular expressions can be used to match file patterns. We'll discuss that in the next lesson. Uh, for now, we need to understand uh, the basic grab use. So let's first talk about some of the most useful options. To start with, there's minus i. Minus i is uh, to ignore case. So if you are looking for Linda, you don't know if you created Linda with an uppercase L or not, use minus i. Minus v is convenient. Uh, it will uh, exclude a pattern. Uh, minus l lists files uh, that contain the pattern without showing matching lines. Uh, and then we have a couple of, uh, of options, minus A5, minus B5, minus C5, to show you also the lines before and the lines uh, after. And uh, minus C is for combined, uh, minus A as well as minus B. And grab minus R will recursively search for a pattern. Uh, let me show you how this works. All right, let me start with sudo grab uh, linda on etc star, uh, which will look in star in etc to see if there is uh, occurrence of the text linda. There we go. And oh boy, I'm getting a lot of messages like is it directory and whatever else. Uh, that is one side effect of grab. If it finds a file that is a directory, it will tell you, hey, I have a directory. I don't want to see this. So I'm using too great then dev null. We've already seen that this is redirecting errors uh, to the null device, which makes it you don't see them. And here we see the result. In the result, it starts with a file name, and after the file name, you see the matching line. If you don't want to see uh, the matching line and just the file name, you can also consider using grab minus L. Grab minus L is filtering uh, out uh, all of this. Uh, right, uh, another use is uh, PSAUX. Uh, pipe grab uh, HTTP. 
the use case. I want to know if my HTTP server is up and running. So I'm using PSAUX. And what do we get? Well, we get a result. And the fact that we get a result is maybe not what you want to, uh, to occur. You can see in the result, grab minus minus color is auto HTTP. This is my grab command. In case you are wondering where does this minus minus color come from, well, that's a shell setting that automatically is showing you colors uh, in grab to make it more usable. We'll talk about that later. But the thing is, if I am checking if uh, HTTP is up or running uh, or not, then I don't want to see the grab command in the result. I just want to see whether or not HTTP is running. So I want to exclude uh, lines that contain the text grab grab minus v uh, grab and in case you are thinking hey sander can't you read that for yourself that this is wrong of course i can read it but if you use it like this then we can automate it i mean you can uh, write a shell script and in that shell script you can do something if http is not running and then really you need the grab command to produce uh, the proper result Right, so more, grab uh, minus A5, uh, Linda, on ETC pass WD, uh, which is showing us uh, the five lines after. Uh, apparently, there are no five lines after. How about minus B5? There it is working, the five lines before. Uh, so I guess we should be using grab minus uh, A, uh, A3 on TCP dump in etc pass wd so tcp dump so that at least you can see that the lines after is working as well and how about we make that uh, c3 then we see the lines for before and the lines after is that useful well not so very much in this case but if you are going to look for configuration files and in the configuration files you want to see uh, the lines just before the line that you are looking for this can be uh, really convenient uh, for now, that's all I want to show you about grab, uh, but we will be grabbing some more in the next lesson. All right, let's have a look at the commands that we have seen in this lesson. It all started with editors, nano, the easy editor, uh, or Vim Tutor, uh, the best way to prepare yourself for a life with Vim. Uh, then there is VI as well as Vim, which both are uh, basically the same editor. Uh, Vim is VI improved. VI is just the original editor as it was created in, the, uh, in 1984. Uh, you will appreciate Vim. And uh, in some cases, if you get to a real old system, you might not find Vim. You can use VI instead. More is what you can use uh, as a pager to see the contents of text files. And less is doing the same as more, but just a little bit uh, better way. Head is showing the top couple of lines in a text file, and tail is showing the last lines in a text file. Then we have cat, which will dump the entire text file. And don't forget about cat minus uh, uppercase A, which will print special characters as well. Uh, and tech is printing uh, a text file in reverse order. And last, we have talked about grab. Grab is the amazing utility that allows you to find uh, text in files as well as command output. All right, now that you know how to work with text file, let's do a lab. Uh, so in this lab, you are going to create uh, a text file with the name users uh, containing the text that you can see on the slide here or any other text that you want. Uh, but do notice that I'm going to use this text file uh, in the next lesson as an example file. So you better uh, create uh, the file, including all the typos uh, that you see uh, on the slide. Next, you use grab to filter all lines that contain the text Anna. Use the appropriate tool to print the last line only for this file and print the contents of this text file in screen in the reverse order. Good luck. All right, uh, let me create this, uh, this file, users. And in this file, users, uh, let me enter all that we need. Something like this. 
It's all about text patterns here. And uh, first we are going to use grab uh, to filter all lines that contain the text Anna. So grab Anna on users. And what do we get? There we go. And you can see that the text that we were looking for is uh, indicated in red. That's uh, the grab minus minus colors option that has been set as a default option doing that for us. So next we need to use the appropriate tool to print the last line only from this file. That would be till minus n uh, on users. A uh, small detail, in older versions of till and head, you need a till minus n uh, followed by the number to print the last line. Uh, but in newer versions, you don't have to use the minus n anymore. You can just use minus followed by the number. Next, we print the contents of this file on the screen in reversed order. That would be tag. So tag users, and there we go, contents of the file in the opposite order. And that's all.